So, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to our Field Service Excellence webinar. My name is Stefan Poirier, your host for today. This session is uh, scheduled for 30 minutes, and my colleague Gary Patterson will be doing the demo portion of the webinar, which should take about 20, 25 minutes. Before we jump in Gary's demonstration, my colleague Cyril Valad will give you a high-level view of the solution that can help you succeed in your field service practice. Also, um, throughout the presentation, you can type your questions in or comments in the Q&A section, and we will handle them during the webinar or after, depending on the number of questions we receive. All right, guys, now um, it's your turn. Seriad. Thank you. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, I'm going to start with... Uh, an introduction on Field Service Lightning. And before jumping into the, the different features of Field Service Lightning, I'm gonna start with introducing the main challenges that the customer uh, mentioned during the first discovery calls and during the, the first meetings, and then see how Field Service Lightning features can help addressing those challenges. And then Gary is gonna show it to you uh, in action. So let's start with the challenges. So really one of the major challenge uh, mentioned by the customers is really the lack of visibility on, uh, on the schedule, uh, which makes things really complicated even to schedule uh, normal priority jobs, but especially to, uh, to, uh, to, to schedule the, the uh, to manage the emergencies um, because we know it can really create chaos uh, among your organization. You need to reorganize the whole planning uh, and it has a major impact on, on your cost and on your SLAs. And, uh, and we talk a lot now about preventive maintenance uh, because preventive maintenance can first uh, reduce significantly the amount of emergencies uh, to manage but it also gives you this, uh, this unique opportunity to, uh, to connect with your customer when there is no crisis, uh, to allow the technicians when he's face to face with the customer to act as a trusted advisor, suggest new products, new upgrades, and, uh, and help the company to, uh, to make more revenues. Uh, one of the other challenge uh, is uh, how can, how do we manage all our technicians? How do we manage their skills, their levels of skills? How, what tools can we offer them to make sure they're gonna complete the job during the first appointments? Um, and of course, uh, one of the major challenge uh, is also the, the customer expectation, uh, which are rising. Especially if you are in a in a in a very in a very uh, competitive context, we are also in a in a very digitized con context. Uh, the customer is now expecting to reach out to you through uh, different uh, communication channels over the phone, uh, texting, chatting, and uh, of course uh, through a website having the option also to book an appointment on your website um, and is also expecting to, uh, uh, to from, from the agent to capture all the information, uh, the information about his account, uh, the work that needs to be performed and make sure that this information is passed on to the technician so he doesn't have to repeat himself during the process because it can be very frustrating for the, the customer experience. And, um, and of course, the, the customer is expecting to have the right technician with the right skills and the right parts uh, to complete the job uh, during the, the first appointment. So now let's see how uh, Field Service Lightning can help address uh, those, uh, those challenges. Uh, so the personas that, that sits uh, in FSL, so we have our customer who is calling the, the call center agent creating eventually your case and then the work order with the details of the job that needs to be completed uh, book an appointment with the customer and then the dispatcher is going to make sure that the service appointment is assigned to uh, the the optimal technician or contractors if you're working with uh, with contractors so how fsl works 
so this slide it, it's really to uh, explain um, how the, uh, the the system works. So FSL has this optimization engine that takes into account a lot of different parameters to make sure that among all of your technicians, one is going to be uh, selected uh, to uh, and assigned to the job. So um, uh, at Nuvix, so when we start uh, the implementation of the solution, we discuss with you uh, many different things like the territories uh, the, the, the technicians can operate on. Uh, we configure the technicians, their skills, their levels of skills, uh, their location. And then uh, we also discuss with you uh, your, your objective, your business objectives. What are your main goals? Is it to minimize travel, minimize overtime, or having the, the most skilled technician assigned to the job, or even a combination of all those, uh, those objectives. And then the, 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 the optimization uh, engine takes all those parameters into account to assign uh, the job to the optimal uh, technician. So now let's see uh, a selection of the FSL features. There are more, of course, but this is really like a selection of uh, features that are relevant for your industries. And of course, uh, if you have uh, questions after, like uh, feel free to post them on the chatter and we will be happy to answer. Uh, so the first one to address the challenge I mentioned before, the, to the, the, the lack of visibility. So on the, the right side of the screen, you see uh, the dispatcher console of FSL. So it's really the, the main tool uh, that the dispatcher is using. And you can see at a glance what's happening during the day, all the different service appointments of your resources, uh, if there is any work in jeopardy, uh, uh, what are the, the emergencies, uh, if an emergency is coming in, it's going to uh, um, be considered as a priority and move things around uh, to make sure that this one is uh, assigned uh, as soon as possible. You can also use, uh, if you see on the on the, the iPad, the, the map, so the, the dispatcher can switch uh, easily uh, on the on the map and see, for example, if there is still an emergency and uh, it can see who, uh, which technician is the closest from the, the site and uh, dispatch this technician to uh, the emergency. And you can also uh, uh, handle uh, normal priority jobs. So for example, if you're selling a product today, but it's only available in 20 days, uh, thanks to this visibility on the schedule, you, you can uh, offer an appointment uh, to the customer in uh, 20 days. Um, so the, the next picture, a feature I wanted to present is uh, the, the maintenance plan in FSL. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned before, it can really uh, reduce uh, the amount of emergencies and make sure that you don't forget any maintenance uh, work. So with FSL, you can, so for example, if you have a product that requires uh, a maintenance work uh, every month for a year, you can set this up in FSL and it's going to generate automatically all the work orders, the 12 work orders and the 12 service appointments. Uh, therefore, you, you, you're sure you, you don't forget any uh, uh, jobs to, uh, to complete. Um, the next feature I wanted to present, it's the, the mobile app, the dedicated, dedicated mobile app of FSL. So it works on Android and uh, iOS. Uh, it, uh, it, it sends all the notification to the, the technician with uh, uh, his new assignments, uh, all the information about the account, uh, the customer, uh, the, the, the details of the work order, the work that needs to be completed. You can also uh, have access to knowledge articles uh, that are tied to the work order to help him uh, fix the issue uh, during the first uh, appointment. Uh, it can also create new opportunities. So if he if he's upselling on site, uh, it can also uh, uh, complete his timesheet and also update uh, the parts he used from his van. And at the end, he can uh, create a service report, capture the, the signature of the, the customer, 
and uh, send it to, uh, to, uh, to, to the operation. And uh, this app also works uh, offline, so the, the technician can uh, do a full shift without any connectivity and you will still have access to uh, all those information. And once you get internet back, it, uh, it gets synced with the Salesforce server. And Gary is going to deep dive into the, the mobile app uh, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes, so you will have a, a better idea of the, the capabilities of this uh, feature. Uh, so the other uh, interesting feature with FSL is uh, contractor management. So you can uh, work with contractors for many reasons. If there is a specific territories where you don't have enough uh, internal resources, or if you want to keep your your resources uh, for specific jobs and give specific jobs to contractors. So with FSL, you can uh, schedule appointments to uh, contractors and their technicians can use the mobile app as a, an internal employee. Uh, you can also have crews uh, with FSL. Uh, so if you have a like, more like, complex project uh, that requires like many technicians with different skills, uh, so you can uh, create crews in FSL and dispatch those uh, technicians to one uh, service appointment. Uh, you can also have a complex work with FSL. So if you have dependencies between the service appointments, so if one can start only if uh, another has been completed, it's an also that's, uh, something that is possible with uh, FSL. Uh, so th this is was uh, the it was the, the, the introduction like the main features of uh, FSL. Uh, of course, uh, after if you have any questions, uh, we can uh, we'll be happy to answer to them. There is more, of course, and Gary is going to show you uh, different features during his demo. And one of them is uh, so we introduced the concept of IoT in this demo. Uh, so you can have a, you can connect smart device to uh, to FSL. So in this demo, we have uh, our customer. It's Acme. So they have smart devices in different buildings, and uh, uh, in one of their buildings uh, on the second floor, the temperature needs to stay in a range of seventy six and eighty degrees. And when it's going out of this range, it's going to trigger a business process. It's going to create a case uh, to make sure that uh, a technician is assigned to um, the, the job. So we have our personas here. We have our customer, Acme, Julia Rossi, uh, the agent, Jean-Michel, and our dispatcher, Gary, and our field technician, uh, Alan Reed. Uh, so I'm going to pass it on to uh, Gary if there is no question. Mm, can I stop share? Gary, you're on mute. I am. I'm sorry. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. And I will say, Cyril, I've been watching the q and Haven't seen anything yet. With that said, anybody who's on here watching, if you have questions, feel free to pipe in. Cyril is going to be watching those while I'm doing my demo. And... Uh, that's the perfect time to ask your questions. If it's uh, a quick enough question, we'll answer it in line with the demonstration. If it re requires a bit of a longer uh, explanation or uh, follow-up questions, we'll, uh, we'll gladly hold that off until the end of the demo, and you can stay on after the fact, and we'll answer those questions for a, a short period of time after the demo is complete. Uh, but please feel free to ask your questions. Okay, so as Cyril mentioned, uh, we wanna highlight how IoT devices or smart devices can integrate into Salesforce and then thus create work or uh, allow businesses to be a, little, a bit more uh, proactive in such a reactive world, uh, that world being field service. Um, field service utilizes not only the service aspect of things, but also the installation and preventive maintenance of things, i.e. maintenance plans, as Serial mentioned. So in this demo, we have a fictional company, Acme, and they have a mobile chipset production facility, as she also mentioned. 
anytime that the thermostat goes, uh, the current temperature in a room goes below a certain degree, it should trigger a case to be created so that uh, people can come and resolve the issue if necessary. So I have this smart thermostat. It's set at 77 degrees. And if I trigger this by just pushing my, my temperature below that value, once it hits that value, it should create a case for me. Now a case is essentially a task. It's something that needs to be done, uh, a trouble ticket, if you will. So I've got this case here and it says warning temperature is lower than normal. So I'll play the role of a support agent. My name will be Jean-Michel and it's my job to review open cases and uh, assign them out to other people or resolve them, resolve them if I can. So as I'm looking at this, the case details are, are, are pretty thorough at this point. I can see that was an automated case. It was created automatically. It's for Acme mobile chipset production. Uh, that account contact is Julia Rossi and it's a mechanical issue. I can see the threshold temperature is 76 and the current temperature is 75. And then this automated description of what's going on. So all of this was triggered from that smart thermostat. Once all this information came into the system, it's now my job to review it and see what I can do to fix it. As a, as a support agent, I know I can't fix this. I know that I can't because my job is to sit in this computer chair and work from my computer. So I know I need to assign this to a resource. So I'm gonna go over to the feed here and click on new work order as an example. And right now it's auto-populating some fields for me, but I'm gonna add a little. Um, let's see. I'll add a small comment here uh, just to say that I've kind of worked with the customer on this a little bit and I want to recommunicate this out to the uh, technician eventually. So I'll click save. And in the back end, what is happening is Salesforce is creating my work order. It's going to appear right over here. So now I have this work order. As a support agent, it's also my job at this point. Um, to schedule this work. I've got my customer on the phone and they're telling me the times at which they want to have the work done. Um, very quickly, the work order has a bit of different information. It has a, a link back to the case that, that uh, triggered this whole issue. And it has a service territory, an address, and my subject and description. Um, oh, excuse me. When I come over here to the related list, there's some other things that were automatically created when I made this work order. There's some work order line items, which are essentially small tasks that need to be accomplished or completed in order to fulfill the, the requirements of the work. And I, it also requires that a thermostat, one thermostat be, uh, be available. And then there's a service appointment, which we'll get to shortly. So from the feed, I, I want to schedule this job with my customer. So there's a couple of ways to do that. There's book appointment, candidates, and emergency. I'm gonna start with emergency. Now this is a mechanism within FSL that allows me to, to schedule work that is of an emergency or a critical priority in, in, in essence to a service resource. Now it could be a service resource that is currently on a job. It could be somebody who is on call and so it's not their normal working hours. What this emergency dispatch uh, action does is it allows me to have a map view and it allows me to see who is the closest resource. Now in this demonstration environment, I don't have a whole bunch of people, but you can see it's giving me a planned route with an ETA. If this resource, Jane Austen, were actually on site in progress for a different job, it would tell me that. It would tell me the type of job she's working on, how far away she is, when she's planned to be completed with the job. And from there, I can make a, an informed decision. Do I want to pull her off of this job right now? It's that big of a deal that I need to pull her off of a job she's currently on. Or do I want to schedule this just after the fact, right after this job is completed? The candidates action up here is a bit, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not as robust or not as uh, aggressive as uh, the emergency scheduling functionality. It allows me to see people who are available to do the work based off of their working time, their skills, their, 
location. And at first it just gives me the names, but then as I select them, it gives me options below that and tells me the date and the planned start time that, that I could get this work scheduled to that resource for. Off to the right, you can see over here, we've got these numbers. This is called a grade. The grade is based off of our organization's business goals or uh, objectives. So some companies may put a real emphasis on getting work scheduled as soon as possible. In other words, uh, you know, we, we really value high customer satisfaction in that case. Other companies might have a bigger uh, focus on driving down operational cost. And so they want to make sure that this is scheduled next to another job that is close in proximity and also still not far away from the service resource. And then other companies may have a mix of that and even other things that they consider a business objective. And so this grade represents how well the, the scheduling of a job aligns with the company's business objectives. The last one is called book appointment. Now this feature allows me as a service resource, or excuse me, as a dispatcher or a support agent to get available appointments in the form of an appointment window. Um, this appointment window is a time range. It can be eight hours, it could be a two hour window, um, and anything in between really. But essentially it's saying we can have somebody on site on this date between these two times here. And then it gives you a more generic form of the, uh, how well that appointment meets your business goals or business objectives by just saying if it's ideal, recommended, or not preferred down lower. Um, this is likely the most well-used feature within FSL with respect to scheduling work. The system here says, I can schedule to anybody who does the skills. I just need to make sure that I, or who has the skills, I just need to make sure that it's within these time parameters. So I'm gonna actually use this. I'm gonna use this one for tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now I've scheduled the work to my customer. It's actually reflected on a service appointment, which is a separate record. I can view it from here if I want, but I'm gonna bypass this for the time being and just jump over and play the role of a dispatcher. So my name is now Gary, I am the dispatcher, and my job is to manage this schedule and make sure that work is being performed, rules are not being violated, things are happening at the planned times, so on and so forth. There's a lot of tools available to me here as a dispatcher, and I'll, I'll try and slow it down a bit in case there are any questions, um, but Serial, please interrupt me if anybody asks any questions that, that need to be addressed right away. Um, over on this left-hand side, this panel is a, it's essentially a service appointment list and there's many different filtered lists views here, but basically this is the work that needs to be done. It says who, who's doing the work, what kind of work it is, um, when the work uh, should be scheduled before and after dates, essentially, and the current status of that, of that job. Over in this main section here, here, this is in fact the Gantt. So this is um, the service territories. And a service territory can be something like a geographical area, maybe a city or a county or what have you. Or it could be a business line, like a uh, service or installations or plumbing and electrical. It could be anything like that. In that event, uh, some, or in that same vein, some customers have a scenario where they want to do both. They want to have a geographical area and a business unit uh, to divide their work so they can manage things in a more finite way. I think I saw a question. Suriel, is there something that needs to be addressed? Uh, yes. Uh, so the question is, uh, the title you can see uh, right after the name of your technician Mm -hmm. have an impact on who is selecting, who is assigned to the job? Um, in this case, no. This is called a Gantt label, and there's no impact there. However, if that is a requirement of your business, you want to make sure that it goes to a certain resource type, that is definitely something that can be done. Okay, so uh, within each service territory, we do have service resources. And each service resource has their own calendar 
Um, as you can see, this is set for today, December 4th, and each of these squares represents an hour of the day. The gray squares are non-working time. This is time that the resource is not available. They're on personal time. The white is their, their standard working hours for that day. And then yellow over here, it, or cream maybe, um, this is really optional time. So this is typically reserved when you have a high priority issue, emergencies, or maybe even installation work. So we can reserve certain sections of time on a resources schedule for very specific types of work. This little coffee cup right here represents the resources lunch break. This is something that is a bit dynamic within the system. And so we can say we want lunch to be sometime between 11 and 2 p.m. And it allow the system to shuffle that around outside of an actual assignment so that the resource will have plenty of time to have his lunch. Up in the top right corner up over here, these are some quick KPIs for the uh, dispatcher, myself, Gary, to keep an eye on. So I have scheduled time. So it looks like five hours of the schedule is consumed right now. This one is travel time with a total of 43 minutes between all loaded work. So these black lines or whiskers, some may call them, uh, these represent the travel time from the resources home base to that job and then from that job to either, eh, this one's a better one, to the next job or back to their home base. So we can consider travel time within their working day. And then over here we have violations. So these are rule violations like scheduling the job before it was supposed to be or to a resource that doesn't have the skills, stuff like that. And then this last one is jeopardies. Jeopardies are an indication of, um, some somebody uh, encroaching on the schedule or encroaching on the plan. So maybe they were supposed to be arrived and in progress on a job and they haven't done that yet. They haven't actually started work on that job. So as a dispatcher, I can be notified of that in real time and be proactive, so to speak, and call my, my service resources and ask them if something's wrong, if they need any help, if we need to reschedule work, whatever. One of the other features is uh, a lot of the times, it's common that a resource may get sick middle of the day or have a doctor's appointment. So I might want to add a non-availability to their schedule or an absence. It could be for a period of time. It could be for an entire day. But essentially, what I want to do is make sure that I'm keeping my schedule up to date so that I don't overbook somebody or assign work to uh, a person when, I, when he's already or she's already mentioned that they aren't going to be around. So I can add non-availabilities as as such. Okay, so over here is my service appointment that I just created a few minutes ago. And to demonstrate what I need to do as a service resource or as a dispatcher, I need to make sure that I am managing the schedule. Now, as a dispatcher, I can drag and drop stuff anywhere I want on the Gantt. And when I do so, the system in the back end will recalculate travel time. And it'll also look for rule violations and update those accordingly. Um, sometimes it'll take a minute. And so this is a, a demo org. So of course it's gonna take a second or two. And here we go. Now we've got some rule violations that just popped up. It's outside working hours and it's, and it's scheduled start is before it's uh, planned start. So I can, I can drag this back around to somebody if I want. In this case, I'm just going to right click and click reschedule. When I do this, it reschedules it to the optimal time. There are two other options. There's reshuffle and get candidates. Get candidates you've seen earlier. And reshuffle will allow the system to not only look at this service appointment, but other ones on the schedule as well. And kind of optimize those few appointments on the schedule to make the most uh, well, to be redundant, the most optimal schedule, considering all factors like travel time, skills, uh, working hours, and so on. So I just used right-click reschedule, and it pushed it right back here as, as it's the most optimal time. Now, as the dispatcher, since I'm moving things around, I don't want to confuse my end resources, my technicians, 
So what I want to make sure that I'm doing is doing this without them getting all this information back and forth and updates all over the place. So right now this job is in a scheduled status. Once I have essentially solidified my, my schedule, what I want to do at that point is dispatch it. Now, as a dispatcher, I can manually update the status to dispatched, but just as a side note, FSL can dispatch stuff for you on a schedule. If, uh, if you need to have your entire day dispatched at 2 a.m., that's something that FSL can do. If you only dispatch uh, the next appointment, for a resource, once they complete job one, we can have the system dispatch job two. So they get stuff in real time in that case. It allows for a lot of flexibility in the system, meaning that we can put um, same day work on the schedule very easily when we utilize a, a dispatching mechanism that allows for such flexibility. Okay, so now this service appointment is dispatched. The color has changed and you can see as I hover over it, it says it's dispatched. What that has done now is allowed Alan Reed to see the work. So I'm gonna quickly transition over. This is my, my cell phone and I'll play the role of Alan Reed. I'm just going to refresh here really quick. And one thing that I can do as a, as a service resource, I can click on my map and right here, it will actually give me uh, a quick overview of my day. So I apologize, I'm doing this off computer on my device. I can see kind of where I'm planned to be throughout the day right now, and this is for December 4th, okay? And then I can get a quick overview of my work that's on my schedule. Well, so this job right here is actually scheduled for December 5th, so I'm gonna change this over to December 5th, and here's my job. I can, at this point, I can get driving directions if I would like. I can also, uh, email my customer, send them a, an SMS or call them if I want. And it'll just open those apps for me right away. So if I click call, it'll go to my phone and it'll fill in my customer's uh, phone number right away for me to call them. If I want to get driving directions, it works largely the same way. I click get driving directions. I'll select Google Maps. It's going to open up my mapping application and start doing the routing right away. As a service resource, I don't need to type in any addresses. It just automatically fills that information in up here. Cancel route, route guidance. And as a last piece, which uh, this is a, a feature that I think is really neat, I can click email ETA. Some customers or some, some businesses have a policy that they need to notify their customer when they're in route. So if I click email ETA, it automatically opens up my email application and pre-populates an email with how long it will take me to arrive based off of Google Maps uh, driving directions. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to my service appointment. From here, I'll click into this and I get a brief overview of the work order. I've got a description up here, customer, uh, company, and the work order number. Here's my service appointment details. As I scroll down, I've got my customer information again. I have the asset that I'm dealing with, which is a thermostat, and then my work order line items. You may remember those. It's, it's just a, a small task that needs to be completed. I have several tabs up here. There's products consumed, details, related lists, and a feed. At this point, Though I know what I need to do, just to fast forward, is mark that I have arrived. So if I click show actions here, I'm going to update my status. It's going to tell me here, this is what the plan is. This is what, will be, what it'll be updated to. So my start time will be shifted to right now. And my end time will be shifted to two hours from now. So I'll select my status, click next and finish. My status will update on here automatically, but this detail is also being fed up to Salesforce. Remember, this mobile application does work offline. And in a second, you'll see this appointment, or hopefully you'll see this appointment disappear from here and it'll actually shift over to my, uh, today, December 4th. So I'll click this. Here's my service appointment now, and it's in an in-progress status. Okay.
So at this point, I'm on site. I want to get some work done. I'm going to select this work order line item. Here it is. I'm going to go over here and just take a look. Here's the description of what needs to be done on my work order line item. And I've, I've read through this and I've identified that I need to replace the thermostat. So first thing I want to do is consume some products. Now, by consuming products, what I'm actually doing is pulling product from my own van inventory. So there's an aspect of inventory management that FSL can provide to your business. You can manage transactions from a warehouse or multiple warehouses into the service resources, van inventory or truck inventory or whatever. If it's shared inventory, that's also something that can be utilized as well. So right here is a list of all of my inventory. So what I need to do is find my thermostat and it's on my truck and I'll click consume. I can select the quantity that I want to consume. And in this case, I'll just do one and click save. So this item's been consumed. And as you can see, my thermostat inventory on my vehicle is now set to two. I'll go ahead and click done. And as uh, one, one other thing before I close or complete this work order line item, I need to add a note saying what I've done. So hopefully this will go to a little bit uh, quicker, but essentially I'll just make a post. Now this is utilizing the out of the box chatter posting within uh, Salesforce. The last bit I need to do is add a photo. So I'll click take photo and get a nice photo of my desk. Should give just a second here and it'll upload. Once this photo uploads, I can click post and try that there. Just one second. I apologize that it's going so slow. It wouldn't be a demo without a, a couple of hiccups. Um, this, this photo and that comment that I made in that chatter post on this work order line item should roll up to the uh, work order line item back in Salesforce back here. After all that's done, that information has been logged for the customer. Excuse me, I'm going to unplug this and plug it back in. And hopefully that'll speed it up. There we go. Okay, so now you can see my post. The last little bit I need to do here is update my status on this work order line item. So I'll just quickly change the status to completed and save and go back to my work order. Now you can see this work order line item has been checked and I'm 33% done with the tasks related to this work order. I'm not gonna go through the other ones. I'll just uh, tell you it, it works largely the same for the other ones. At this point, I've essentially completed the work and what I need to do now is give the customer a service report. So if I scroll down just a little bit more, I've got service reports here. I'll click on this. I can view a preview of this service report or I can just skip that and go straight to getting signatures. So I'll click get signatures hand it to the customer. In some cases, you may want to hand it to the customer. In other cases, the service resource needs to be the one to sign. So I'll click done. The person now can view a preview if it's the customer, or I can just click sign again. And in this case, I'll put Julia Rossi. Enter here and JR and save. Now that I've done that, I can generate my service report. So I'll just click this button. And again, offline, the, the Field Service mobile app will generate this PDF by pulling in data from the work order line items, the work order, and the service appointment into one file. I can view all of this information right here from my mobile device. So I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see this stuff. As I scroll down, you can see here are some work order line items right here, products consumed and signatures. Uh, some businesses do sell stuff as point of sale items while they are while the service resource is on site. Maybe you have like an upsell mechanism that you utilize or a damaged part that needs to be invoiced to them. That kind of information can be found in a service report or configured for a service report to display. 
And last but not least with this is sharing that service report. So if I click on the share button, it opens up my share panel for any applications that I may use to share this. I can email it or whatever else there is. But this will also be available back here on the service appointment for us to, to email to the customer directly from Salesforce as well. Okay, so I've completed the work. I wanna update my status again. So I'll just quickly click update status. Market has completed and it's gonna change my end time. So right now it's consuming two hours of my available schedule. When I click next and finish in a minute or so, this will get updated and shrink this appointment down to be very, very small. And now I have all this free time for the rest of the day where more work can be put on my schedule. This is a major benefit for a lot of businesses to utilize a system like that so retrospectively they can see the work as it was actually completed, thus freeing up future time. I'm not done as a, a technician though. While I was on site fixing things, the customer told me they had other things that needed that uh, other opportunities that are coming down the pipe. They're building a new building and are gonna need several more thermostats. So I'll just create a new opportunity from my mobile device. Click okay. And amount, we'll say 700. Um, enter. And for a description, I'll say new op. This will go through for just a second. Once all of it is completed, I can just click save up here. I wonder if I can stop this. And now my new opportunity has been saved. It too is uploaded and the sales team at this point is now able to review this opportunity and go and contact our customer uh, to help them with that next job that they have. This is, uh, uh, honestly, a, a small bit of the stuff that FSL and FS Mobile can provide when we look into IoT or any type of system where we're automatically pushing stuff to Salesforce. I think the the possibilities are, are really limitless here. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to to raise your hand or chat it in the window and and let us know. I guess uh, it was a pretty clear, pretty interesting presentation, Gary, thank you. So um, we're ahead of our time today. Uh, so um, I wanna thank you, Gary. I wanna thank you, Serial. So before we leave, I just wanna mention that I will reach out to you individually following today's presentation to provide the, the recording, of course, of the webinar. So um, also feel free to reply should you have any questions uh, that Serial or Gary could answer. All right, so um, we hope you enjoyed this webinar. We thank you for your presence and wish you, of course, a wonderful day. Bye everyone.